Ladies, I'm Laura Vitali, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I want to share with you how to make a super easy, simple, but phenomenal summer corn chowder. It's so basic. There's a little bit that goes into it, not a whole lot of ingredients, but it's so phenomenal. Now, let's start with this right here because this is really the star of the show. If you just watched last week, um, I shared with you how to make the perfect boiled corn and the perfect grilled corn. Now this is the boiled corn that I had. I cut it off the kernels and I have it in this bundt pan because it's the easiest way. You just stick your corn cob in there and you just cut it along the side and all the kernels fall right in there and it's perfect. This is the flavorful broth that you boiled your corn in. This is going to be what adds so much lovely flavor to this. And then you'll also need some bacon. You need some butter, you need a little bit more milk, you need some finely chopped celery, onion, and garlic. You'll need some golden potatoes, and I just peel them and small, like dice them really small, uh, and some salt and pepper. And at the end, I'm just gonna add a little bit of chives. What I also have in here is just some more corn and some more of the stock to separate because I'm going to blend this with my immersion blender to really add a richness and thickness without having to add any flour or anything like that. So, in this pan, first thing I'm gonna do is add my bacon. There's nothing in here, no fat, and it just turned it on because I don't want the pan to be super hot because I want the bacon to render some of its fat. And once it's nice and crispy, I'm going to take it out, and then we'll move on to the next step. Remove the bacon. Oh, surrendered out. Not that much fat because it's only a couple slices. I'm just going to add a little bit of butter because I want plenty of flavor for all of my onions celery and garlic, and I'm just going to saute them until they become sort of translucent. I'm going to hit them with a little pinch of salt. I don't really want them to caramelize, I just want them to soften, become translucent. It already smells insanely good. So just keep an eye on them, you don't want anything to burn, nice and soft. And then I'll show you what they look like when they're there. These look fantastic, I'm just going to go ahead and add my stock, I don't need all of it. So I'm just gonna take some and reserve it. Some milk, if you don't have the magical cooking broth from the corn, so you're just doing this with some fresh corn on the cob, then you would just use a little bit of chicken stock and some more milk, um, some more milk to the mixture. So I'm gonna add my potatoes. Add that right in, looks good. I added the milk, I'm gonna add the bacon right back in. Now, this is gonna need, the potatoes will take about 40 minutes to cook until tender. I'm going to add this corn in 20 minutes. I want the potatoes to be halfway cooked because my corn is already cooked and I wanna retain a little bit of its crunch, but I also don't want it to be like too crunchy, so 20 minutes of cooking is like perfect. If you're using raw corn, Personally, I would add it at this stage. If you're somebody that likes really crunchy corn in your, in your chowder, then just go ahead and add it at the very end, like the last five minutes or so. Like I said, I don't prefer that, so I'm just gonna let this cook for 20 minutes, and then add this corn and let it continue to cook for another 20 minutes. All right, so in total, it's been about 40 minutes that this has been simmering. I added my corn 20 minutes in, I just tasted it, and the corn is still crunchy, so do not fear. I'm gonna take this liquid, with, remember we set aside some liquid and some of the corn. I'm gonna take my immersion blender and I'm gonna puree this. And this is gonna be like, it's gonna add a lovely creamy component to the chowder without adding any additional flour or anything else. Add this right in. Look how gorgeous. I mean, this is like my dream right here. I'm gonna add a good pinch of salt and lots of black pepper. I'm gonna let it simmer. Come on! You know what? This thing is so disrespectful. It like jams up on me, it clogs up on me. I mean, ugh, oh, anyone. Anyway, uh, I'm really getting mad now. <laughs> I'm gonna let this simmer for a little bit while we'll fight with this pepper grinder. And then we will be ready to serve. And look how beautiful. I mean, look at the color. Look at that. And it smells like summer. Turning that off, and it is just absolutely gorgeous. If you want it thicker with more of a cream, thick consistency, then you could do a roux. For me, it's an absolutely no-no. The only thing I want the thickness to come from 
it's the potatoes and not corn and that is it and that is absolute perfection now it might be nuts because you know this week in jersey it's been 98 degrees every day shout out to one of my favorite 90s boy bands literally 100 degrees outside and i'm making soup but you know what mother nature said here's beautiful delicious sweet corn it calls for a summer corn chowder and i blush because that's what i do let me take a little taste of roux oh hot i'm crazy though because i'm really hot and sweaty oh my word this is the way corn chowder should be completely pure mostly corn no peppers because i feel like bell peppers are just too strong of a flavor and they compete with the sweetness of the corn a little smokiness and saltiness from the bacon complete magic in a bowl just go to laurainthekitchen.com get the recipe make it make sure you make your boiled corn first because you're going to want that broth perfection i'll see you next time bye